Hey there, uh, great to be back on live stream. I'm hoping that this will hold out. If I have problems with uh, the speed, I will upload a, um, a replacement video. But today I wanna to talk about um, how you can actually create a workflow between Dorico and Cubase that basically allows you to maintain single articulation tracks in Cubase allows you to do your composition in Dorico and uses a very specific pair of tools, which are dissolve part in Cubase to parse a MIDI export from, uh, from Dorico. And I'm going to show you how that's done. So this would be a great video for you if you're somebody who likes to compose in Dorico, but you like to mix and uh, ultimately output your stuff from Cubase. It looks like maybe I am having some issues with uh, broadband, so I'm going to have to maybe upload a replacement. But let me get continue on with the demo since I'm already filming this. So um, let me actually just turn this on, and let's see, there you are. You can see the demo. And um, so what we have here is just a real basic part. I'll just play it for you. And what I want to demonstrate here is that these first four notes are um, going to be natural or just kind of sustained patches in my sample library. These slurred notes here are going to be legato. These ones here are staccato, and then I've got four marcato. And that's important so that you can see how these instruments wind up in Cubase. Just to double check, I like to come down here into uh, this lane at the bottom. And you can see down here, natural, legato, staccato, and marcato. You can see that my expression map is being applied correctly. And uh, just a quick look at that expression map, since I know that that often is a point of kind of confusion for folks working here. I've created my own here. I just called it dissolvable. And that's because I'm using this dissolve feature in Cubase. So I have all of these set up here. Now this is very, 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 very important. You'll notice that I have no key switches. I have channel switches instead. So natural is sending out on channel one. Um, my, uh, let's see, I was using legato. That goes out channel two. I think I had uh, staccato. That's going out on channel four. And then the final one was marcato which is going out channel six. And that's really important that I'm not using key switches here at all. I'm only using channel switches. You'll see why that matters so much um, as we make our way into Cubase. So once I've got this, I'm, this is just a very simple demo. Obviously this is not real music, but um, I just go up to Darko and I do a very simple export here, export MIDI. And then I export it here. And I've already done this before, so it's asking me if it wants it to overwrite. I'll say OK. All right. And then I'm going to close down Dorico. And um, I am using Vienna Ensemble Pro for this. Um, I, I've started using this recently. I don't think it's required. Um, but if you do use Vienna Ensemble Pro, in my view, it kind of speeds this process a little bit. So let's open up. Cubase. If you have questions, by the way, about, um, you know, using this with VE Pro, um, how some of my expression maps are set up, anything like that, feel free to uh, just leave something in the comments and I'll, I'll get back to you. Um, so let's continue on with the demo here. I've got this um, Project template set up in Cubase, which I called dissolvable. Again, this is because I'm using this dissolve feature. And I'm going to go ahead and create this and um, go ahead, save that. Because this import process is really important. It's quite complicated, really, in terms of how to set this up. But um, this is why I'm making a video about it, so I can share with you guys how it works. And I'm going to make some more videos about uh, maybe some of the finer points. Okay, so this is my template. I used to have, you know, a bunch of single articulation tracks, but you can see all these folders are open and I don't actually have any tracks in here. What I do have is a collection of VE Pro 
uh, instances over here connected to my uh, VE Pro instances. So things like percussion and strings and so on and so forth. And that's really all my template in Cubase is, is a set of VE Pro instances. This ensures that the sound that I got from Dorico is exactly the same sound I'm gonna get from Cubase. Now normally, if we were going to import this from, uh, import some MIDI from Dorico, normally the process would be like, okay, you get a, a bunch of MIDI, you get a violin track, you get a cello track, right? And if you're just doing that with MIDI, it's not really that helpful because you have all these key switches in there and key switches are problematic for professional orchestral production because we need to use negative delay compensation. Negative delay compensation is an absolute key, like essential element of getting your orchestral stuff to sound great, especially if you're working on like hybrid stuff, action stuff, trailers, things where the rhythm is super important. This is not a lesson on negative track delay. You can look that up. There's some great, great videos out there. Um, but if you just import the MIDI from Dorico, everything's on key switches. Um, that's great, but when it calls legato, that needs a different negative delay than a spiccato patch or a staccato patch. And right away, things have fallen apart. So you, you really have to mix uh, in Cubase historically, if you want the timing from Dorico, you'd have to export audio, like audio stems, bring those into Cubase, and then mix the audio. And that's all fine. That works great, and I've done that many times. The problem for me with that and is that um, I often want to come into Cubase and add layers, right? So maybe I want to come in and I want to double um, my pizzicato double bass. I want to double that with like a synth pluck or something. But it doesn't really make sense for me to bring a synth pluck into Dorico just to double it up. It's so easy to do in Cubase. Or maybe I have these long, uh, as I do in this example, I had like some, some cello whole notes. And maybe I want to double those to like some kind of cool synth pad, um, something in Cubase, something from Pad Shop, or from those textural libraries like um, Arcus or Farlight, stuff like that. So Cubase is such a great environment to do that in. So having the MIDI really helps. So I want to maintain the MIDI. I want to be able to tell what the articulations are. So, and I also want to maintain my negative track delay. That's what I'm doing here. So let me take myself off camera. And we're going to go up here and we're going to go to File, Import. And I'm just showing you this. So you see, it's not like I saved some kind of really special uh, MIDI file. It always wants to know if you want to start a new project. No, I've got my template open. I'm going to come here and grab my uh, MIDI that I exported from Dorico. And here you go, just what you would expect. I get, let me uh, zoom in here. Right, I've got my four bars, a whole notes in the cello, and I've got my violin part here. And of course, if I normally had this set up with key switches, <laughs> I'd have all these key switches down here. Uh, so looking at this, I can't tell which of these notes were legato, which ones were staccato, which ones were mercato, et cetera, et cetera, right? By the way, you can see that um, my CC1 and CC11 values, my dynamics from Dorico have been preserved here, which is really, really helpful. So if I said something was mezzo forte in, in Dorico, it's going to come up and essentially play mezzo forte here. Okay, so how do I get these into um, single articulations very quickly. Well, I've got this all set up on a button using macros and project logical editor presets. That's the complicated part. I will explain that a little more, give you an overview. I don't want to get into it a uh, super ton because it's, it's a very deep topic and I don't want to bore you with that. I'll make a different video about how I went about that. But I've got basically a set of macros um, I'll just give you a glimpse at those under key commands. Like I've got this uh, one that connects outputs to all the VE Pro instances. I've got this other one that like renames certain instrument tracks under certain circumstances. Um, I've got a bunch of project logical editor presets, things that do stuff like um, 
Let's see, dark workflow. Uh, let's say this one's a good one. Um, deleting imported parts, tidying up these little flags. Um, so stuff like this, you know, it's not too complicated, but it's, ex you know, it, it's basically a set of uh, project logical editor presets. I've bundled that all into a mi macro, which I now have on a stream deck button. So I hit a button, it's gonna dissolve all these two parts into their respective um, articulation. So I'm gonna wind up having one violin cello, but I'm gonna wind up having four violins, one that is natural, one that's legato, one that's staccato, and one for Mikado. So after I um, use this button, it does come up with this dissolve part menu up here, generally, I deselect optimize display. Optimize display is basically going to, um, if I have that checked, it will create. It, it will not. It'll it'll create gaps in the MIDI parts if there are no notes. But I don't care. I just want one solid part. I do separate by channels, and that is a key. That's key to this. By the way, uh, well, I will go through this. But the the reason that I do channel switches in Dorico in my expression map instead of key switches is precisely because this dissolve part functionality in Cubase is capable of separating by channels. Now it can separate by pitches. This would be great for a drum machine, let's say, where all your kicks are on C1 and all your snares are on D1, something like that. Separating a MIDI track by pitches would basically break your drum track into multiple tracks where each track is a specific instrument. The way I have it set up using channel switches, it's going to divide out the articulations based on channel. So I hit process, all right, and this is what I get here. So you can see I've got four different violin tracks here. I've got my natural, my legato, my staccato, and my marcato. Now right now they're just named things like six and five, but that's because channel six is what I is the channel switch I use for Mercado, and channel four is the channel switch that I used for staccato and so on. That's why these, and you can see the channel's actually been preserved through my Dorico export. And I have another macro that's gonna rename these so that it's super helpful. Now you'll also notice there's a bunch of MIDI uh, parts and tracks here that don't really have anything in them. So I have another set of macros that's gonna clean all that up for me. So I just hit a button and I get this. Now these names don't make any sense, so I have another button for that, and now it changes the names, and it also colored them, all of my strings I color green. So now I can see, oh, this is sustain, this is legato, this is staccato, this is marcato, so on and so forth. But now you see, I could just create a, um, an instrument track here, let's say uh, I'm gonna go with pad shop, uh, just for a demo, all right. And it might take a second to load that up. Um, didn't really have a preset set up for this or anything. Um, but let's find a nice pad. Um, it's my media bay, I guess. Let's find, let's go with this, <laughs> Alien Water. Who knows what that sounds like? All right, well, that, that does the job. You know, I just wanted something ambient to prove the point. So I'm going to copy this cello part, which is long sustained notes. I'm going to copy that down there. So now I have a copy of my cello. That's just so much easier, right? Now... These are not connected up right now to my VE Pro instances. So what I will sometimes have to do is come into my project logical editor presets like um, I have this connect, let's say for uh, a violin, violin one. And the, this parameter here, sometimes I do just have to recheck. Okay, it's MIDI and six on, on VE Pro strings. 
I go into this long drop down box, which represents all of these rack units. I look for V pro strings, uh, MIDI in six, which is right there. Hit apply. And it not only changed the routing information up here for this violin track, but also all the other violin tracks down here. My cello, I guess I'd have to do that as well. Um, I have created these and put these on buttons as well. So I'm just kind of demonstrating these for you so that you can um, see how they work. So I might come in here, change this back to strings nine. Is something about this has to be sort of reconnected on a per project basis. But as you can see, it changed it there. And now when I play it back, I'm gonna hear exactly the same instruments. I'll mute the pad shop for now. As I heard from Dorico. There's my staccato, my marcato, right? It's all going through exactly, it sounds exactly the same. I'm sing, I have single articulation. And now I've got that pad shop pro pad in there. I love that kind of workflow, being able to um, just import the MIDI. I press a few buttons on my stream deck and I'm good to go. Now, um, the one thing that uh, I ran into here with reconnecting the instruments does have to happen sometimes. I think it's something about the way that, um, that when I load up a template that has a bunch of VE Pro instances in it, there's something about how uh, maybe that those instances are addressed within Cubase, something that's not visible to me. So although my... Um, Project Logical Editor preset says connect this to VE Pro Strings MIDI Channel 6 or MIDI Port 6. Um, and that's exactly what I tell it to do again. I think there's some kind of internal addressing that maybe is a little different each time I create an instance of my, my Cubase template. But that's a small price to pay. As you can see, this has taken me minutes um, with my buttons set up. Uh, I'm using, you have to set up an expression map in Dorico that um, is, uses channel switches instead of key switches. You uh, need to set up a selection of project logical editor presets and potentially macros that combine them in order to make this super efficient. Otherwise, you know, the labor in this would take a long time, but once you turn it in, you take a couple of hours, basically is what it took me uh, to set all this up. Then I have a few buttons, and as you can see in minutes, it's reproducible every time. And I can also um, just want to point out, there are things about Cubase that I absolutely have to use. They are, first of all, you can't work with audio in Dorico, right? So if I want to work with audio, I've got to be in Cubase. Um, Cubase is way better for effects and uh, processing and mixing. Um, it's way better at things like host automation. I know you can record some MIDI CC automation in Dorico, but host automation from, uh, you know, like my complete control keyboard or machine or uh, some other external device, way smoother, way slicker. Um, and the video uh, writing and mixing to video in Cubase is way better. I do like some of the features in Dorico. They're just not really that mature yet. One example is that in Dorico, if you try to record to video, like you're watching their video player, you'll find there's like a, a five or six seconds uh, offset. So you can't possibly record live to playback of a video in Dorico. It, it doesn't work. And I posted on this on the forum and I've had uh, Daniel at, um, at Steinberg confirm, yeah, this is a problem. So as of right now, it's unfixable. You can, I can only record live to a video in Cubase. But my favorite thing about Cubase is that, um, oh, sorry, let me get this back on the screen. My favorite thing about Cubase is this warp feature up here where I can just come in and I can, whoops, I can go ahead and, well, Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe uh, I've got the tempo track switched off. Silly me. 
Silly me, turn on the tra tempo track. So let's say that you know I wanted to warp this so that that hit happens right on a video edit. That's so easy to do here like this. Also, um, you can set up per articulation negative delay compensation values in Darko. You can say all my pizzicato samples should be played back with a minus 40 uh, millisecond negative delay compensation. In Cubase, you can say that on a per track basis, but it's a pain after I've done this import to then go up here to my track and set my delay value. To do that for each track would be a pain. When you set them in Dorico is part of your expression map. Again, it's an investment of time, time almost every composer has to put in anyway. But in Dorico, it's saved in the expression map. And then when you export the MIDI like this, the MIDI actually has that baked in. It's hard printed. And if you still need to modify where the MIDI is on the grid, you don't have to quantize because you can just use this, uh, this grid warping feature within Cubase. So it's really the best of all possible worlds. I hope this has really been helpful to you. Please like and subscribe if you got something out of this video. Um, I am going to certainly look for questions, so please post questions if you have them. I know I've covered a lot here. I'm trying to keep the video from getting ridiculously long. And um, I will talk in the future about how I set up these Project Logical Editor presets, how I set up the macros, and how I set up the expression map to do channel switching in Darko so that that's all more clear. And that will be coming up in the, next, uh, in the next few videos. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. All right, bye.